Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing your children to your presence to empower, to impact their lives, to give them knowledge that wipes out every form of ignorance, knowledge that sets them true, that sets them free. Tonight again, open our eyes of understanding. Amen. So that Satan will not get an advantage of us. Amen. Oh Lord, open our eyes so that we'll be able to know how to secure the victory that you have ordained for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight, we are looking at the message. Preventing the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. Somebody is asking, can somebody rebuild strongholds that have been destroyed? Yes, Satan can rebuild it. And we want to make sure that that process is prevented. And I'll be looking at the message tonight and next week as well by the grace of God. Tonight we'll look at part one, preventing the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. When we talk about satanic strongholds, what are they? Satanic strongholds are areas of bondage, areas of captivity, you know, in people's lives. Our focus and our trust, that is the direction in which we are going, must always be to pull down these strongholds in the lives of people because they are oppressive, they are restrictive. We pull them down by faith or we reduce them to ashes as we set fire onto them. And we're going to be seeing that tonight. However, Satan is an unrelenting enemy. He does not give up. You know, he came to Jesus, first temptation, Jesus won. Then he came back the second time, and Jesus won. And he came back the third time, and Jesus won. And you know what the Bible says? He left Jesus, not forever. What does the Bible say? For a season. Because he is coming back. He's an unrelenting enemy. He's an enemy that never gives up. So even when Israel has gone out of Egypt, don't think that it's final. Pharaoh will try to see if he can bring them back into bondage. That's what we are talking about tonight. Even after you have escaped the corruption of the world through lust, Satan will see whether he can imprison you again and bring you back into defilement. He doesn't give up. So even when strong goals have been destroyed in your life, if you are careless, Satan will find the way of rebuilding that strong gold in your life. Sometimes in the family, strong gold has been destroyed in the life of parents, in the life of the father, in the life of the mother, and you are living fine. But if you are not careful and you are not focused, Satan can come and try and rebuild that strong gold in the life of your children, bringing the strong gold back into the family. That's why as believers, we must be wise. Tonight's message, I pray that God will open your eyes to see. Amen. Use it to analyze your family. Use it to analyze your situation and see whether some of the strong goals that you have already escaped, that has already been destroyed, whether they are starting to be rebuilt back in your family, then you need to do something about it. Satan is an unrelenting enemy, and he will do all in his power to rebuild these strongholds that were formerly destroyed in our lives. We must, through divine empowerment, we must, through our faith, resist and prevent Satan 
from you know rebuilding these former strongholds in our lives. And I pray that whatever victory God has given you will be permanent. Amen. I pray that where Satan is trying to, you know, bring you back into bondage. It's not, you know, when Paul said that, stand fast in your liberty. Where with Christ has made you free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He's telling you the activity of Satan. Yes, you are free. But stand fast in that liberty. Because Satan will try to cancel that freedom and bring you back into the yoke of bondage. But you need to prevent that. You need to prevent the rebuilding of satanic strongholds that have been destroyed in your life. Now, let's even see how do we even, first of all, destroy the satanic strongholds that can be in our life. In Hebrews chapter 11, I read verse 13. Because in a physical way, the walls of Jericho, they represented a stronghold, preventing Israel from entering, you know, their promised inheritance. What is a stronghold? My brother, anything that prevents you from entering into God's inheritance, that's a stronghold. Anything that prevents you from enjoying the best that God has for you, that's a stronghold. And for Israel, Jericho walls will not allow them to enter in, into that you know, inheritance. It was a physical stronghold that needs to come down so that they can inherit the physical land that God intended for them. Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 30, the Bible tells us by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. That's what we're talking about. And I pray that every Jericho wall in your life, they will crumble in Jesus' name. Amen. In Joshua chapter 6, I read from verse, Joshua chapter 6, I read from verse 15. Joshua chapter 6, from verse 15. It says, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they come past the city seven times. He's telling you the four, six days, it was only one time. But on this seventh day, they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass. At the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord had given you the city. You are not to shout before the command has been given. But once the command has been given, you need to rise up and shout. So Joshua said, we have completed the seventh compassing of the city on the seventh day. Now it's time to shout. Once the priest blew the last blast of the trumpet, Joshua told them, shout. No, verse 17. And the city shall be a cause. Let me read from verse 18. And he, he shall know why. I mean, just telling them, keep yourselves from all the, the, the treasure, the gold, the silver, all those things will go into the lost treasure. Nobody should take it. Unfortunately, Achan took out of it. In verse 19, and, the, and all the silver and all the gold and vessels of brass and from an iron are consecrated unto the Lord they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Verse 20, so the people shouted. When the priest blew with the trumpet, and it came to pass, when the people 
had heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, and so that the people went up with went up into the city. Every man, no exception, straight before him and they took the city. They couldn't do that as long as those strongholds were standing. They knew where they were going, were to take over Jericho, but Jericho is shut up. The, the strongholds, the walls were there. But the Bible says when they gave the great shout and the wall fell down flat, nobody is, going, is saying, well, let me take a souvenir of this. It's, it's not time to take souvenir, it's time to take over the city. The Bible says they went straight, every man before him, and they took the city. And I'm praying that tonight, as the strong goals in your life, as they crumble, you go straight and possess your possession. Amen. You go straight and, you know, you take over the city. You go straight and take over what God has prepared for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is a strong goal? A strong goal is anything that prevents you from being who God wants you to be. A strong goal is whatever prevents you from entering into your inheritance. A strong goal is anything that does not make the, the fulfillment of the promise of God to come to pass in your life. And those strong goals, they need to be pulled down, like the walls of Jericho. The moment the walls of Jericho came down, the people moved in straight, they took over the city. Now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Pulling down satanic strongholds by faith. The Bible tells us by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. And tonight, every kind of obstructing stronghold, you know, restricting stronghold in your life by faith, they are coming down in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10, I read from verse 3. The Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We may be physical human beings, but our, but our fighting is spiritual. It's not after physical stuff. In verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To so doing what? To the pulling down struggles, casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself above against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's what the weapons of our warfare are meant for, to pull down strongholds. And you can pull down satanic strongholds by faith. You can pull down satanic strongholds by the use of the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but are mighty. Weapons that are engineered by God. Weapons that are empowered by God. Weapons that have been, you know, made available by God for effective warfare. Weapons of our warfare. So we need to understand that Jericho was represented a stronghold preventing Israel from entering their promised inheritance. By faith, this stronghold crumbled after compassing the city seven days. That's what we have read. By faith and with the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but mighty true God, we also can pull down satanic strongholds and every evil imagination and every evil infrastructure that militate against our freedom, militate against our dominion, we can do the same. And tonight, you will pull down strongholds by faith. Amen. Amen. You will use the weapons of your warfare and pull down whatever stronghold, stronghold in your personal life, stronghold in your nuclear family, stronghold in the extended family, and the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. One, I read Jeremiah chapter 1, I read verse 10. Here, God told Jeremiah, See, I have this day set you, set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out every weed growing, you know, on your beautiful plot. Tonight, God is saying, I've ordained you. You will root Amen. them out in Jesus' name. Amen. Every unprofitable tear, every unprofitable weed, 
occupying space on your God-given land. Tonight, you root them out in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says, and to pull down every strong gold standing against you, they will be pulled down in Jesus' name. Amen. And to destroy every evil imagination, they will be cast down and destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. And to throw down every evil infrastructure that has been mounted against your progress, they will be thrown down in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you have rooted out and you have pulled down and you have destroyed, then you can begin to build on the promises. You can begin to plant, you know, plant trees of righteousness that will bring profit to your life. But first of all, we need to root out. We need to destroy. We need to cast down. We need to throw down. We need to uproot. And tonight is a time for bringing down. Zechariah chapter 4, pulling down satanic strongholds by faith. Don't allow them to remain in your life. Don't allow them to remain in your family. They have no place in your life. Strong goals are meant for destruction because they are not profitable in our lives. Satanic strong goals, I mean. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, and this is the word of the Lord unto you tonight. Amen. Saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts, God will empower you tonight to pull down strong goals by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Seven, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, that was a mountain, a stronghold that was in Zerubbabel to accomplish that which God said he should accomplish. And I don't know what God has given you to accomplish. But it's a great mountain standing before you. Say you are going nowhere. You are not going to accomplish it. I will make sure I instruct you. So verse 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Thou shalt become a plague. God says, that mountain will crumble. Amen. That mountain will be down. That Amen. mountain will become level ground. Amen. It shall become a plague. And it shall bring forth the headstone thereof with, with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. When the grace of God and the mercy of God and the help of God arises, Every great mountain in your life, they will be leveled in Jesus' name. Amen. Those great mountains are becoming plains in Jesus' name. Amen. Pulling down satanic strongholds by faith. That's one way of dealing with satanic strongholds. You pull them by faith. But another way of dealing with satanic strongholds is by pulverizing satanic strongholds by fire. You reduce them to ashes by fire. You set them on fire. Look at Judges chapter, chapter, chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. Somebody did that. Of course, we are not to do that kind of a thing because he did to innocent people. He was evil. But we are learning some strategies from him. How strong goals can be handled if you, know, you want to eliminate the strong goal and the inhabitants of the strong goal. In Judges chapter 9, I read from verse 46. Judges chapter 9 from verse 46. It says, And when all the men of, of the tower of Shechem had that they had that, sorry, had that, they entered into an hold of the house of the God buried. That's a stronghold into an hold, stronghold. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up by Mount Zalman, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an ax in his hand and cut down a ball from the trees and took it and 
laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, what ye have seen me do, make haste and do it, and do as I have done. Verse, verse 40 and verse, verse 49. And all the people likewise cut down every man is above and is above and, and followed Abimelech and put them in the hole. That is, they put all that wood that they have cut, they put them against the stronghold and set the old, the stronghold in the first. I said the stronghold. On fire upon them, so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also about a thousand men and women. These people they ran into the strong tower, they ran into the stronghold, thinking we are safe. Abimelech cannot get us. Abimelech just got there and burnt the whole thing. All of them died inside. And that stronghold will just crumble and collapse to ashes. All the wood, everything will be burned. That set his strongholds on fire. In Second Kings chapter, you know, and he tried to do it again to another one. That was where he met his end. Because somebody threw, you know, a mortar that broke his head. Otherwise, even that second tower, he would have burnt it, burnt them, burnt the, the tower to ashes. Second Kings chapter 8, in verse 12. Elisha was talking to uh, Azai. He said, you are going to be a wicked king. And Azai said, am I a dog? But look at what Elisha told him. Second Kings chapter 8, verse 12. And Azai said, why we pest? Why we pest, my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. They are strongholds will thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with the sword and and will dash their children and rip up their women with child very wicked pregnant women just cut them into pieces even with really? you know he would, he would do evil and one of them he said i know you will set their strongholds on fire raise it to ashes and that's one of the things that can be done we can set strong goals on fire jeremiah chapter 51 so apart from pulling down satanic strongholds that's one one way of dealing with satanic strongholds pull them down by faith but another one is pulverize them to ashes by fire jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25. Behold, I'm against thee, O destroying mountain. This is a stronghold. This is a mountain before somebody destroying the opportunities, destroying the life, destroying everything. And God said, I'm against thee, O destroying mountain, said the Lord, which destroys all the earth. And I will stretch forth, I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. I said, you are a mountain, yes, but I will roll you down. I will set fire on you. You will become a burnt mountain. Verse 26, and they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, said the Lord. You know what God is saying? You are a mountain, but I will so burn you that you will be ashes. Somebody is looking for a stone, for a corner stone to build in his house. He will not be able to pick up even a pebble. I will reduce you to ashes that nobody will be able to use anything. That was a stronghold set on fire reduced to ashes. So we can pulverize satanic strongholds, we can set them on fire. Another way 
of destroying strongholds is by setting them on fire. This is illustrated by what Abimelech and Azael did. Satanic strongholds and the salt, I mean, destroying mountains can be set on the fire of the Holy Ghost and reduced to ashes. You find that in the scriptures. Jeremiah said that destroying mountain will be reduced to ashes. And you find fire has come down from the presence of the Lord from time to time to burn up that and to burn up that and to burn up that. And we can pray and say, oh God, send down your fire. All those strong goals in my life, burn them to ashes. Oh God, send the fire of the Holy Ghost and these strong goals, set them on fire and let them burn to ashes that nobody will be able to pick anything from them. They are destroyed and wasted forever. I pray that tonight as we pray that strong goals in your life will be set on fire. Amen. Your family will be set on fire. Amen. The tiny strong goals in the extended family will be set on fire. Amen. And they will be pulverized in Jesus' name. Amen. But you know, it's one thing for strong goals to be pulled down by faith. It's one thing for strong goals to be pulverized to ashes by fire. For well, Satan is not going to give up. Strong gold A has been pulled down in your life. Strong gold B has been pulverized by fire. And you think Satan is going to say, hey, I give up. He's an unrelenting enemy. He will come back, he will want to see whether he can rebuild the strong gold that has been you know, that has been pulled down. He wants to rebuild it so that he can assert his authority over your life once again. And that's what we want to do. We want to prevent new strong goals from forming in our lives. You want to prevent Satan from raising new strong goals in your life. Somebody says, but is that possible? Let me just show you a passage. Joshua chapter 6. I mean, Joshua chapter 11. We have read it before. I want to read it to you. Joshua chapter 11. Let me read from verse. Let me read from verse 6. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them. For tomorrow, about this time, will I deliver them all up all slain before Israel? Thou shalt half their horses and burn their chariots with fire. What did God say here? God says, you half their horses, you know, like hanging them, killing them, and all their chariots, you burn them with fire. What did Joshua do? Verse 9. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord Indeed. bade him. He huffed their horses and burned their chariots with fire. Yeah. So this was a stronghold. Joshua raised it to the ground, burned, you know, huffed the horses, destroyed the infrastructure, their military infrastructure, burned the chariots with fire. Now look at verse 10. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor. I wanted to see that city, Hazor, and smote the king thereof, killed the king with the sword. For Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. That was the headquarters, the stronghold of the enemy. He, the king of Azor was the coordinating king, was the principality and power that was controlling and the organizing everything in, in that place. He, he was, that's the king. And Azor was the headquarters of the, of the enemy, you know, enemy uh, attack on Israel. It was a stronghold. So in the case of, so Joshua killed the king of Azor. Joshua destroyed the military infrastructure. He burned the chariots, he burned them up. 
he, I mean, all the horses, he huffed them. Then the city itself burned with fire. You see what he did? Look at verse 12. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword. And he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. commanded. Look at verse 13. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them except Azor only, that the Joshua burned. So the city was burned to ashes. The strong gold was burnt up. Military infrastructure destroyed. Chariots destroyed. Horses destroyed. The king eliminated. This is like you know, setting a strong gold on fire and you destroy it. Well, this was at the time of Joshua. Hmm. Somebody says, Azor completely destroyed. Go with me to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. Because I want you to see what I'm talking about tonight. Judges chapter 4, in verse 2. And the Lord sold them unto the king, unto, into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Azor. I thought Azor has been raised now. They rebuilt it. <laughs> the enemy rebuilt the stronghold. I thought the king has been executed. They raised a new king. I thought their chariots have been burnt with fire. Is that so? Let's read on. So God delivered Israel unto Jabin, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Azor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Arosheth of the Gentiles. Verse 3. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. I thought the chariots were destroyed, burnt. Yes, new ones. They rebuilt that stronghold. And now it became even stronger than it was originally. The Azor that, you know, Joshua had raised down completely, they rebuilt it. The chariots that Joshua had burnt, they built new ones. The horses that you know that Joshua had hoffed, they got new horses, bred new horses. The king that Joshua had killed, they raised a new king. And that's rebuilding the stronghold. They did. And look at verse 3. It says, And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. He didn't only oppress them, but the Bible says he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. The Azor of Joshua's time was nothing compared with the new Azor of Deborah's time. The burnt city had been rebuilt. The chariots that were burnt, they've been replaced. The army that was eliminated, they have a new army. The king that was killed, they have a new king. The horses that were, that were hawked, they raised new horses. The strong gold is back in, in, in fashion. Ask me, what were the children of Israel looking at that they allowed the enemy to rebuild that strong gold? We can be here tonight blaming Israel. My brother, what are you looking at that the strong goal that the Lord eliminated from your life, you have allowed the enemy to rebuild it back. What are you looking at? My sister, the deliverance that you got some years ago, five years ago, how come you are back in that bondage again? What are you looking at? We could say, what were the children of Israel looking at? Look at how Joshua raised Azor. That strong goal burnt it, eliminated the king, destroy the military infrastructure. 
what were they looking at? And they allowed the enemy to rebuild that stronghold. <laughs> it's a lesson to us tonight. That's what the enemy wants to do every time. The enemy is looking at you. The strong goals that have been eliminated in your life, the strong goals that have been pulled down in your life, if you are not careful, enemy wants to come in and rebuild those strong goals. That's why we must prevent the rebuilding of those strong goals in our life. You must prevent new strong goals from forming in your life. That's why it says, stand fast in the liberty where which Christ has made you free. Don't allow yourself to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The enemy will want to raise that bondage again and put you in captivity. Don't allow it. Stand fast in the liberty where which Christ has made you free. These people rebuild the stronghold and they now became a lot of I mean, a lot more terrible, oppressing the children of Israel. And not just ordinary oppression, the Bible says he mightily oppressed Israel. Let me tell you, if you are free from one bondage, if you allow the enemy to rebuild the bondage, it will be more terrible. Somebody says, but pastor, is that so? Don't you realize what Jesus Christ said? When an evil spirit is gone out of a man, the man is free, but the evil spirit does not give up. He's looking for where to settle down, he cannot find. He says, I will go back to my house from where I've been rejected. Then when he comes to that house and says, ah, the place is still free and there's nobody there. He goes to take seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Then they join themselves and come into the man. The case of the man is worse than Satan will come back with a vengeance. The new bondage will be stronger than the old one. The new Azor is stronger and more terrible than the old Azor because the enemy is coming like a wounded lion. It's coming like a, a tiger that has been robbed of his, uh, of his, uh, of his, uh, you know, uh, of his children. That's what is happening. It will come back very strong, very oppressive, mightily oppressing the children of Israel. My brethren, don't allow the enemy to rebuild strong goals that have been destroyed in your life. Those strong goals will remain destroyed. Those strong goals must remain pulled down. Those strong goals that has been set on fire and they are born to ashes, they must remain ashes. Don't let the enemy use the ashes to make new bricks, to build new strong goals in your life. No, they must remain ashes in Jesus' name. Amen. So Asom was a fortified stronghold of the enemy at the time of Joshua. And Jabin, the king of Azor, was a leading principality and power in that territory. We have already read it. Joshua eliminated Jabin, the king of Azor. You read that in verse 10. And Joshua destroyed Azor. He burnt it to ashes. You read it in that passage. It, you know, he destroyed the army. He destroyed the armed forces destroy the military infrastructure of chariots, of horses, of their weapons. He brought everything to zero. However, now in the time of Deborah, Azor had been rebuilt, a stronger stronghold, and with 900 chariots of iron and new military infrastructure. And now they mightily oppressed Israel. Israel should have prevented the rebuilding of, you know, of Azor as a stronghold, but they did it. The new king of Azor, the Bible says, now mightily oppressed Israel. You know, you don't allow a board to come and build, you know, a nest upon your head. Do you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The board lands on your head and the board says, stay, stay cool, stay cool. Let me build my nest because I want to be living on that. Will you allow? No, sir. No, you, sir. you just you know, tell the board if you don't want to kill it, get out of this place. You don't allow a board to build a nest on your head. What was Israel looking at? That it didn't prevent Azor to be rebuilt. And now Azor was fully rebuilt, now became a snare unto them. My brother, don't allow the strong gold that has been destroyed in your life to be rebuilt. It will be worse. If you have gotten deliverance, you know that man, Jesus Christ said, see no more, 
Let's say worst thing come upon you. This man has been sick for 38 years. Something, if, the, if, if something else is going to come, worse than that, the man is finished. Because sin will open the door for the enemy to come in and put you back again into the captivity from which you have been delivered. Jesus said, see no more. Now you are free. But see no more. Let's a worse thing come upon you. Satan always wants to come back and put people into new captivity, rebuild the former strongholds, and they will be stronger. But I pray that by the grace of God, you will not allow it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord Joshua also destroyed Jericho. It was a stronghold. But you remember in 1 Kings chapter 16, the Bible says, He held the better light. He rebuilt Jericho. Strong goals can be rebuilt. That man rebuilt Jericho later. And yet Joshua had caused Jericho. Nobody will rebuild you. Jericho, you will remain in ruins forever. Read it in Joshua chapter 6. But somebody with audacity, he went and he rebuilt Jericho. Even though he suffered consequences, but he rebuilt it. He's to tell you that strong goals can be rebuilt. And Satan has the agenda of rebuilding strong goals in your life. So thank God for the strong goals that God has already eliminated. But be smart, be alert, be aware of Satan's strategies. He doesn't give up. He wants to come back and rebuild that stronghold. You must not allow it, and you will not allow it in Jesus' name. Amen. We must never allow the enemy to rebuild strongholds formerly pulled down in our lives. Because, you know, if the enemy succeeds in rebuilding the former strongholds in your life, you know what? He has gotten an advantage of you. And the Bible says we are not ignorant. Let Satan should get an advantage of us. If the stronghold that has been destroyed in your life, Satan succeeds in coming back to rebuild it, he has gotten an advantage of you. But Satan will not get an advantage of, of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Every stronghold that has been pulled down in your life, they remain pulled down in Jesus' name. Amen. Every stronghold that has been set on Holy Ghost fire, they have been reduced to ashes, they remain ashes in Jesus' name. Amen. They will not be rebuilt in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The goal of Satan, you need to understand that, is always to rebuild former strongholds to regain, you know, to reoccupy where he has been expelled. And look at Matthew chapter 12. Remember that Satan wants to reoccupy where he has been expelled. He says, well, they, they forced me out, but I want to retake the territory. I want to go back to the territory. He, he will try. He will try. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When, a unclean, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house. He's calling the man his house, a human being. The unclean spirit said, that's my house. I've lived there for 20 years. Now they came and, and drove me out. But it's my property. I will go back to my house. Let's see. It says, I will go back to my house from whence I came out. Can you see? Can you see this joker? Did he come out or was he driven out? Can you see his language? I will go back, go back to my house from where I came out. You didn't come out. You were forced out. You were cast out. You were driven out. So I will go back to my house from where I came out. You are a defeated foe. You were forced out. It was You didn't willingly come out. You, you were cast out. So don't use this language. Use the proper language. You should have said, I will, I will go back to my house from where I was cast out. Say, I will go back to my house from where I came out. I see, he came out willingly. He didn't come out willingly. Evil spirit, unclean spirit, you were cast out. You were forced out. You were commanded in the name of Jesus to pack your load and get out. And you had no option. So now, he comes back. 
Then he says, and when he is called, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. The place has been clean. Verse 45. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also with this unto this wicked generation. Jesus said, the evil spirit has been cast out. The man has freedom. But the man should not rejoice too much. He needs to do something. If he does not close the gate, that enemy will come back and say, let me retake my house. Let me re-enter my house. Let me reoccupy where I've been sent out. And then you push the man in, in captivity. But he will not now come alone. He will come with seven other spirits more wicked than himself. The last bondage is worse than the first bondage. That's what Christ is saying. And that's what the enemy tries to do. Strongholds have been destroyed. He will try to rebuild that stronghold. You need to understand that. That's the strategy of Satan. But we will prevent it in Jesus' name. Amen. So he will try to reoccupy where he has been expelled. He will try to reestablish his, you know, his program when men sleep. That's why you cannot afford to sleep. A good man planted good seed in the soil. Then after some time, the seeds were growing, the plant was growing, and then weeds were growing. And then the disciples said, they did not plant good seed in your soil. How come this bad was growing? He said, while men slept, an enemy has done this. I pray you will not be sleeping. Amen. Because if you sleep, during the time of slumber, it will rebuild that stronghold. During the time of slumber, it will revisit that place. During the time of slumber, it will retake that territory. During the time of slumber, it will re-enter and reoccupy that space from where it's been cast out. That's what he wants to do. But you know tonight's nice message? Preventing the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. Wow. I pray that in your family, you will prevent the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. If as an individual, husband and wife, there were strongholds in your life before, and by God's grace, you are now free. Remember, Satan can try to rebuild it. When he cannot get you, he can turn to your children and try to rebuild that stronghold in the life of your children. You remember Revelation chapter 12, the woman, you know, that, that gave birth to the baby. When Satan wanted to consume the baby, God took the baby to himself. Now that Satan could not reach the baby, he went and persecuted the woman that gave birth to the baby. And that's what happens. When Satan cannot reach this one, he will take another one. Maybe because you are developed now by the grace of God, your faith has grown, the power of the Holy Ghost is active in your life, and Satan cannot do anything to you, he can follow your children and say, well, I will rebuild the same stronghold, but in the life of the children. You must prevent that. You must pray. You must fast by faith. Using the weapons of your warfare, you are going to prevent Satan from rebuilding satanic strongholds in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You can't afford to miss part two of this message next week because I'll still be talking on the same topic. I'll show you more, you know, on this, on this topic, preventing the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. I'm asking you, are there areas of your life where, by the grace of God, by the prayer of faith, you, by the anointing of the Almighty, yokes were broken, curses were destroyed, bondages and strongholds were pulled down. But when you look at your life today, the enemy is starting to rebuild those things. Those strange sensations that you experienced five years ago, they are starting to come back. Those demonic dreams that you experienced two years ago, and God has completely helped you, and they are free, and you are free, they started coming back. You know, all the things that used to happen, all the mishaps in the family, and you have been free for the last three years, nothing has happened. But all of a sudden, they are now showing signs of coming back. You must prevent them. Preventing satanic, you know, the rebuilding of satanic strongholds. 
know that strongholds have been destroyed. Yes, they've been pulled down. Yes, they've been set on fire. But Satan does not give up. He will try to rebuild them. And it is your responsibility to make sure he doesn't rebuild them. Israel did not take responsibility. They left the enemy. He rebuilt Azor. Nobody did anything. And before you know it, somebody rebuilt Jericho. Those were strong goals that were wasted, but they were rebuilt. And the strong goals that have been pulled down in your life, Satan is Satan is after, after them. He wants to rebuild them. But by the grace of God, by faith, with the weapons of our warfare that are not carried but mighty through God, we are going to make sure that those strong goals, they remain pulled down. Those Amen. strong goals, they pulverized by fire. Those strong goals, they remain wasted the way they are. And tonight, the Lord himself is going to do it. Rise up and let us pray and tell you, Lord, every strong goal in my life that has been destroyed, they remain destroyed. Every strong goal that has been pulled down, they remain pulled down. Every strong goal that has been pulverized and they are reduced to ashes, they remain reduced to ashes. Satan, I, I forbid Satan from rebuilding strongholds in my life. I resist Satan from, from rebuilding strongholds in my life. I prevent Satan from rebuilding strongholds in my life. My brother begin to pray. My sister begin to pray. Thank God those strongholds have been, have been, have been, have, have been pulled down by faith. But they need to remain pulled down. Thank God that those satanic strongholds, they've been pulverized by the fire of the Holy Ghost. They, they, they need to repent. Don't allow the enemy to use the ashes to make bricks to rebuild new strongholds in your life. They must remain as ashes, wasted. You are going to pray and say, Oh God, oh God, every stronghold that has been pulled down in my life by faith, they remain pulled down. I forbid Satan to rebuild them. I prevent Satan from rebuilding them. I oppose Satan from rebuilding them. I, I, I resist Satan from, from, from rebuilding them. I prevent Satan from rebuilding those strongholds. Don't let the enemy rebuild them. Don't let the enemy rebuild them. Don't let the enemy rebuild them. You have been free from satanic dreams. Don't let him rebuild them. You have been free from all. All the mishaps of the enemy. Don't let me repeal those experiences in your life. You are free. You are free. You are free. You are free. Prevent the rebuilding of satanic strongholds in your life. Don't be like Israel that allow Azor, a stronghold that has been destroyed and, and, and reduced to ashes, to be rebuilt. No, 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 no. You are not going to do that. You are not going to do that. God, begin to pray, my brother. Begin to pray, my sister. Tonight is a night. And any strong goal the enemy has been trying to rebuild in your life, pull them again, pull them down by faith again. Or put them. Maybe it's, it's beginning to sprout again. That bondage is beginning to sprout again. Or put them. God has ordained you to uproot, to destroy, to root out, to pull down, begin to do that. The new strongholds that are that are that are sprouting, uproot them. The new strongholds that Satan is trying to rebuild, pull them down. The, the one that is still thinking about, forbid them. Prevent them. Jesus, I prevent them, oh God, to be repealed. Your night is your night. A night of victory. A night of praying through to your dominion. A night of getting the best from God. The night of getting the very best. Your night of your night is your night. Your night of empowerment. Your night is your night. Your night of breakthrough. Your night is your night. Your night of total freedom. Your night is your night. Don't allow the enemy to rebuild any, any. Don't allow the enemy to rebuild any structure that has been destroyed in your life. Those strong ghosts must remain destroyed. Those strong ghosts must remain completely destroyed. Those strong ghosts must remain destroyed. Those strong ghosts must remain wasted. They must not be 
They remain the wastelands. They are wastelands. They remain wastelands. No rebuilding. No rebuilding. My brother, no rebuilding. My sister, no rebuilding. God is telling you tonight. This is your night. Your night of victory. This is your night. Your night of dominion. This is your night. Your night of total freedom. The enemy has been rebuilding anything in your life. Forbid it. Prevent it. Resist it. You must not rebuild anything in your life. Let the strong ghosts that have been wasted in your life, let them remain wasted. Strong ghosts that have been pulled down, let them remain pulled down. Every Jericho wall that has crumbled in your life, they must remain crumbled. Those Jericho walls must not be rebuilt. They must never be rebuilt. I command them to remain crumbled in your life. Or be the enemy to rebuild anything in your life. He's not meant to be a builder in your life. You don't need the services in your life. In the name of Jesus, Father, for thou alone has the finance. I put on every remaining stronghold of the devil out of my life. In the name of Jesus, bring down this house. Forbid the enemy tonight, prevent the enemy from rebuilding satanic strongholds that have been destroyed in your life formally, you must not rebuild them. You must remain free. You pass in the liberty where with Christ has made you free. Don't allow yourself to be entangled again with the yoke of one day. Satan will try it. But forbid him. Resist him. Prevent him. Oppose him. Fight him. Fight him. You are free. Remain free. You are free, my brother, remain free. You are free, my sister, remain free. Your family is free, that family must remain free. Don't allow him to put you in bondage. You are free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we thank you for tonight. Thank you, Father. We thank you for the insight you are giving us. We are learning from the mistakes of Israel. Israel allowed Azor, that strong gold that has been wasted, Israel allowed Azor to be rebuilt. By the time of Deborah, the strong gold was now too, too much, mightily oppressing them. It was their fault. They could have prevented that stronghold from rebuilding. Lord, we saw that Jericho was a stronghold. It was destroyed and wasted. But by 1 Kings chapter 16, somebody with audacity rebuilt Jericho. And we have seen that it's always a strategy of Satan to rebuild strongholds that have been formerly destroyed in our life. If we are sleeping, if we are slumbering, if we are careless, if we are ignorant, and we don't understand the strategy and the wiles of the devil, he will rebuild them. But tonight, we thank you for the revelation. We thank you for the insight. We thank you for the information. We thank you for the knowledge. We forbid Satan from rebuilding formerly destroyed strongholds in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. We resist Satan from rebuilding formerly destroyed strongholds in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Destroying mountains that have been reduced to ashes, they remain ashes in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. We will not allow Satan to use those ashes as if they are cement and gold to be making bricks so that he can come and rebuild those, those things, they remain wasted, they remain ashes in our life, in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we pray every Jericho world that has been, that has crumbled and, and, and fallen down, they will never be rebuilt in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have been free, 
<coughs> and the enemy is saying, I will go back to my house. I want to reoccupy. Oh Lord, in the places where evil spirits have gone out, they will never reoccupy, in, they will never be reoccupied by Satan in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let them be sealed and let them remain free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray. Wherever the enemy wants to come back, maybe some of the brethren on the platform tonight, areas where they have obtained freedom, areas where they have obtained deliverance, but now signs of bondage is sprouting. Oh Lord, in their we uproot those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything that our Father has not planted tonight by faith, I uproot them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, I pray. Every stronghold that has been destroyed, remain destroyed, remain wasted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We forbid the enemy. Amen. We seize the enemy. Amen. We prevent the enemy Amen. from rebuilding formerly destroyed strongholds in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that every one of my brethren will remain. They will stand fast in the liberty. They will stand fast in the freedom. They will stand fast in the deliverance. They will stand fast in the dominion. Where which Christ has made them free, they will refuse to be brought back again into the yoke of bondage. The Satan will never rebuild the strongholds in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your freedom, remain in your freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your deliverance and remain in your dominion in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank you, in Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.